Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Vintage NASCAR Owners, Roger Hamby. Roger Hamby founded his team in 1977 and was active through 1988. The team had 36 different drivers spend time behind the wheel of one of their race cars. But they only ran four full-time seasons throughout their career in NASCAR. This is a year-by-year -year breakdown of the team's career. In 1977, Roger Hamby himself made two starts in his number 17, Hamby Ellis Chevrolet. His best start was 22nd, and his best finish was 19th, both coming in the fall at North Wilkesboro. For the 1978 NASCAR Cup Series season, Roger Hamby ran the full-time schedule, only GNQing one time. He was once again driving that number 17 Hamby Ellis Chevrolet. His best start was 14th in the fall at Bristol, and his best finish was 10th twice in the fall at Bristol and Richmond. Overall, they scored two top 10s and finished 21st in final point standings. The next season, in 1979, several drivers made starts behind the wheel of the number 17 Kings Inn Chevrolet. Roger Hamby himself made 15 attempts, qualifying for 13 of them. His best start was 17th, twice, in the summer at Daytona and in the fall at North Wilkesboro. His best finish was 12th in the fall at North Wilkesboro. Bill Elliott, he made three starts in, at number 17. His best start was 12th in the fall at Richmond, and his best finish was 10th in the fall at Bristol. Skip Manning made two starts for the team also. His best start was 18th, in the spring at Daytona, and his best finish was 32nd in the spring at Charlotte. Now, Steve Pfeffer also made two starts for the team. His best start was 28. 28. His best finish was 30, 30th in the fall at Charlotte. His best start was 28th in the fall in Atlanta. His best start was 30th in the fall at Charlotte. Jim Vandiver made one start in a number 9 Kings Inn Chevrolet in the fall at Darlington, starting 26th and finishing 28th. The following season, in 1980, Roger Hamby made the majority of the starts for the team 26th. His best start was 18th in the spring at Nashville Fairgrounds. Their best finish was 12th in the fall in Atlanta. Hamby finished 20th in points. Glenn Jarrett made one start at the end of the season at Ontario, starting 20th and finishing 12th. Don Whittington made one start for the team in the 1980 Daytona 500, starting 26th and finishing 16th. That following season, 1981, the Roger Hamby team went back to having a rotation of drivers behind the wheel of their race cars. Tommy Houston made the most starts for the team in 1981 with seven starts. His best start was 19th in the summer at Nashville Fairgrounds, and his best finish was 11th in the fall at North Wilkesboro. Now Mike Potter, he made six starts for Roger Hamby in the 81 season. His best start was 21st, and his best finish was 15th, both coming at Nashville Fairgrounds. Now Lowell, now Lowell Coel also made four starts. His best start was 21st in the spring at Dover, and his best finish was 17th at College Station. Glenn Jarrett came back again and made three starts this season for the team. In 1981, his best start was 22nd in the spring at Richmond, and his best finish was 19th in the spring at Daytona. John Anderson made two, star two starts for the team. His best start was 29th in the fall at Rockingham. His best finish was 16th in the fall in Atlanta. Harry Gant made one start at Riverside, starting 28th and finishing 15th. Roger Hamby made one start himself at College Station, starting 34th and finishing 27th. Steve Pfeiffer made one start as well at Riverside in the summer, starting 35th and finishing 14th. Now Lake Speed made one start also at the end at the end of the season at the season finale at Riverside starting 
34th, and finishing 16th. Steve Spencer also made two starts in Roger Hamby's number 17. His best start was 31st, and his best finish was 20th, both coming at Bristol in the spring. The 1982 NASCAR Cup Series season ended up having the Roger Hamby team sign Lake Speed to drive for the team full-time. Speed drove the number 17 Yazoo Mowers Buick. His best start was 8th in the fall at Riverside. His best finish was 6th in the fall at Darlington. Overall, they scored 5 top 10s en route to 20th in final points. The team was absolutely plagued with DNFs, though. Ending up, ending, their race ending 19 times in the, in, with a DNF out of 30 races in a season. That's, that's pretty rough. Mike Potter, he also made two starts for Roger Hamby in a number 66. His best start was 34th in the fall at Darlington, and his best finish was 20th in the summer at Pocono. Now, Lolo Coel also made five starts for Hamby in 1982 in the number 66. His best start was 26th in the, in the spring at Talladega and his best finish was 13th in the summer at Daytona. Now, for, for the 1983 NASCAR Cup Series season, Hamby hired Sterling Marlin to drive the number 17 Hesco Exhaust Pontiac. His best start was 13th twice in the spring at Nashville Fairgrounds, and in the fall at Martinsville. His best finish was 10th in the spring at Dover. Overall, they scored one top 10, and they finished 19th in final points. Clark Dwyer made five starts for Roger Hamby as well, in the number 10 Kings Inn Chevrolet. His best start was 20th in the spring at Talladega, and his best finish was 10th in the fall at Dover. The 1984 NASCAR Cup Series season saw Clark Dwyer spend the majority of the time behind the wheel of the number 17 Hesco Exhaust Roger Hamby ride. And that was for 20 races. His best start was 17th in the spring at Talladega, and his best finish was 12th in the spring at Rockingham. Morgan Shepard made six starts for the number 17 Hesco Exhaust team. His best start was 10th in the fall at Bristol, and his best finish was 12th in the fall at Richmond. Lake Speed made two starts in that number 17 when he wasn't driving for Haas Ellington, due to the fact that they were running a part-time schedule, thus opening up the opportunity for Speed to drive for Hamby for a couple starts. His best start was 16th in the fall at Northwoods Row, and his best finish was 17th in the season finale at Riverside. Sterling Marlin qualified a number 10 Kings Inn Chevrolet for Hamby in the 1984 Daytona 500, starting 40th, but finishing a reasonably impressive 15th. Not that bad for starting that far back. A brand new season, but yet the Roger Hamby team continued to rotate drivers. Phil Parsons made 14 starts, basically all the races that the Jackson brothers didn't have scheduled for him to race. Due to the due to the fact that they were also running a limited schedule. Though Parsons did bring over the school sponsorship to run on the number 17 when he was behind the wheel. His best start was 8th in the summer at Bristol. And his best finish was 9th in the spring at Martinsville. The 1973 NASCAR Rookie of the Year... Lenny Pond made seven starts. His best start was 23rd in the spring at Michigan, and his best finish was 13th in the summer at Pocono. Ken Reagan, yes, the father of David, David Reagan, made six starts. His best start was 29th in the spring at Darlington, and his best finish was 17th in the summer. Okay, in the summertime at Michigan. Now, Bosco Lowe, made one start for the team in 1985. He ran the spring Talladega race, starting 37th and finishing 17th. Next up, in 1986, the carousel of drivers continued. But, don't, don't take me stating this as necessarily a bad thing. Uh, a whole, whole lot 
of young young drivers got much much needed seat time you know throughout this experience so you know by me putting that comment in there i don't want you guys to think i'm just saying that trying to say that trying trying to put it out there like it's a bad thing because it's not necessarily a bad thing in fact i wish there was more teams like that nowadays doug heverton made 10 starts for the for Roger Hamby's team, his best start was 20th in the spring at North Wilkesboro, and his best finish was 15th in the Daytona 500. Eddie Birchwell Birch made 9 starts in the number 19 Kmart Chevrolet. Number 17 Kmart Chevrolet. His best start was 18th in the fall at North Wilkesboro, and his best finish was 11th in the fall at Richmond. Then, Poncho Carter made six starts in Roger Hamby's number 17 Kmart Wins Oil Chevrolet. His best start was 17th in the summer at Watkins Glen, and his best finish was also 17th in the spring at Michigan. Phil Parsons came back and made two more starts. His best start was 11th, and his best finish was 29th, both in the spring race at Richmond. Uh, uh, Jim Hall made one, one of his two career starts for him, for Hamby in Michigan in the summer. He started 41st and he finished 23rd. Turns out that the 1987 season would be the final somewhat full-time season that the team would ever run. Slick Johnson made seven starts in a number 12 Hesco exhaust, sometimes Chevrolet, sometimes Holdsmobile. His best start was 25th in the spring at, at Bristol. His best finish was 12th in the spring at Del Darlington. The Canadian driver Trevor Boys attempted seven races with the team only qualifying for a few of them. His best start was 30th in the fall at Darlington, and his best finish was a solid 11th at Pocono. Larry Pollard, son-in-law of two handsome Harry Gant, made four starts for the team. His best start was 26th at North Wicksboro, and his best finish was 13th in the fall at Richmond. Now, David Sosby also made three starts for Hamby. His best start was 31st, and his best finish was 21st, both coming in Atlanta. Jim Bound also made two starts. His best start was 28th in the spring at Riverside. His best finish was 23rd in the spring in P P Pocono. Larry Caldell made one start for the team at Dover in the fall, starting 33rd and finishing 21st. V. Mark Martin made one start at, Tal at Charlotte rather in the spring, starting 41st and finishing 39th after an engine issue. Rodney Combs also made one start for the Hamby Racing Team at Charlotte in the fall, starting 38th and finishing 37th. Jeff Swindell made one start for the team as well, at Talladega in the summer, starting 33rd and finishing 34th. Brad Teague also made one start for the Roger Hamby group in 1987 at Bristol in the summer. Now, he ended up starting 24th and finishing 28th after DNFing. He wasn't able to finish the race. Well, it was 1988, what, and what would turn out to be Roger Hamby's final four NASCAR series starts as an owner. So, they put the one and the only Steve Moore behind the wheel for three starts. It, his best start was 35th, and his best finish was 23rd, both in the Daytona 500. Lenny Pond made one start at Richmond in the spring the following week, starting 31st and finishing 22nd. So, so in all, Roger, ha Roger Hamby had 36 different drivers spend time behind the wheel of one of his race cars. In 290 NASCAR Cup Series starts from 1971 through 1988, scoring 11 top 10s and a best points finish of a 19th in 1983, by Sterling Marlin.
Roger Hamby really did give a lot of drivers their, well, really their first opportunities. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for Roger Hamby and the opportunities he gave some drivers, some of them drivers we may have never ever even heard of. Well, sure do appreciate you guys watching this video. Take care.